guys, welcome back for another video. Today we're taking a look at a new tool, a relatively new tool, from DigiSync. It is a carb and throttle body sync tool. Now this is a maintenance item that for some reason, so many motorcycle owners skip out on, syncing your throttle bodies. They just think it's not necessary or they don't have a problem. And yet they'll complain about, oh man, my hands go numb and there's a high, high frequency vibration and, and tingling after a while. And they'll do all sorts of things like put on huge foam things on their grips and wear bigger gloves and put on bar ends and all this kind of nonsense. And they've never synced their throttle bodies and it takes care of all the harmonics and makes everything glass smooth and it's in your manuals. You are supposed to do this periodically. It's not hard. So I'm gonna go through what you get here and then we're gonna go out in the garage and I'm actually going to do one on my FJR and I'll also directly compare this to the tool I've been using for the last 18 years, the CarbTune Pro from England. So in here, you get this nice handy dandy case. We do have a, oops, sorry. <laughs> hit my stand there. Got a little scan here and that's just for the manual. So I'll just read up on that. Should be pretty self-explanatory. You turn it on, you plug it in, you take some readings. I love that they give you extra little vacuum caps. I actually have a whole bunch of the Yamaha caps because number one, it's easy to lose these. And I've, I do this service for my friends. Probably 50% of the time, at least one of the caps on whatever bike I'm doing is damaged. They age, they get hard, they crack, and you do have to replace them periodically. So they give you a whole bunch here. Totally cool, very appreciated. And then we have some adapters here, which I'm not 100% what they're for yet. I don't believe I need anything like this on, oh, you know what, I bet I do. I remember when I got my CarbTune Pro way back in the day, um, you fit the ends to the specific size you want. But now that I think about that, I think those were restrictors. I'll, I'll have to go back and see, but I don't know if I use these with my particular bike or not. But again, it's in the manual. We get a five and six mil set of adapters. Now the units, they have three different units, two, four, and six cylinder versions. And that's just how many leads you get here, how many probes, how many ports. They sent the six in, obviously good if you are an owner of a six cylinder motorcycle or a shop and you're doing stuff, a little protective film on there. We have a nine volt battery in the back that powers it. Kind of wish it was rechargeable, but that keeps it super easy. And you know what? These kinds of things are such a low power draw. You're just powering the LCD and the sensors inside. It's very low maintenance and low draw overall. So this nine volt battery is likely to last years and years. So I really don't care, but if it was a cost saving measure, I'm all for that. We got a power button here. Let's see what happens. Oh, there we go. I could barely read it off axis. looks better on camera. <laughs> Calibrating with engine off. Yeah, I definitely need to, uh, oh, calibration done, turn engine on. So I guess it self calibrates when you turn it on. I love that. Calibration is very important and there are many different tools that you can use to do this, starting with the basic DIY. And there have been plans for DIY manometers, which is what these tools are for many years. There are dial gauges, there are metal bars, there are mercury, and there are digital. This is simply the most accurate way. You not only get a tachometer, but you get very precise readings this will make it super fast and easy to dial things in. If you're, if, especially if you're a shop and doing this with any kind of frequency, you need something that's hundred percent accurate and fast and easy and reliable. This is also magnetic. So you can just stick it on your tank or wherever it's convenient. You don't have to put this in any particular position. And that's one minor drawback to the other types um, that use the bars like the carb tune pro they need to be in a vertical position So you need to find a convenient spot and hang it from the handlebars or your shop tools or whatever So it stays vertical and those bars aren't rubbing you certainly can't put it down like this on a horizontal surface And the other types have their pros and cons as well, but this Doesn't matter. The only downside to this is the cost. It's a little bit more than even the carb tune pro and that's ridiculously overpriced when I bought it, I think it was 
just under 100 bucks. They're about 125 now, and you're just playing. You're you're just paying for four little metal rods and a bunch of plastic. That's it. There are no electronics in it for 125 bucks. At least with this, you're getting technology. It's also designed and manufactured in the USA, and they proudly put that. We've got a nice rubber grip here. This thing is solid. It's got some heft to it. The magnet is strong on the back and they do give you a warning. So don't get this near anything susceptible to magnetic fields, especially watches, which I'm actually in the middle of my watch table here and I made sure that there's nothing close to it. So that's it. Let's see if we can turn it off here. Try holding it down. You know, that's how you set things. Let's try holding it down a little bit more. I'm just totally guessing here. <laughs> Maybe it auto shuts off. Not sure. Maybe a quick tap. There we go. Quick tap. Bada bing, bada boom. All right. The leads themselves are very long. So are the Carp Tune Pros. The, I'll have to double check it. They look about the same. Looks like they're about, uh, oh, two and a half, maybe three feet. So very generous. Anyway, that's what we've got. Let's go to the garage. Okay, ready to rock and roll. Got the bike warmed up, very important. All prepped, ready to put a tool on. I'm not gonna go through the how-to on this. Already did a video on that, covers everything you need to know. I'll put a link down in the description. Now, we're gonna compare the two tools, which I promised you, and I also wanna mention something that I'm very appreciative of, and that's that they uh, give you the extra caps. I got my caps off here, and even though I do have brand new Yamaha caps up there, I'm going to use the ones that they gave me because three out of four of my Yamahas are starting to crack. I don't have any leaks, but they are starting to crack, so it's time to replace them. But the new ones have thicker walls. They're not quite as soft and squishy and pliable, so theoretically at least, they should last quite a bit longer. So I'm gonna throw those on. I already verified they fit just fine, and they're very easy to put on with needle nose pliers. You just squish these spring connectors there's plenty of material to bite. With these little ones, you don't even need to pinch them. You just gently pull them off and the springs are so soft, they'll come right up and over that little lip on the tube all by themselves. So really like those guys. So I read through the instructions and you guys already saw everything. There's nothing to it. It automatically calibrates every time you turn it on. Very cool, no more having to manually calibrate the tool. I mean, it's good if you have a tool that can be calibrated, that's very important, but you know, a little bit of a pain in the butt to do it. No need to worry about that here. Now, um, these are indeed for other applications that use screws as plugs instead of tubes and caps. So I will never be using these. I've never worked on a motorcycle that uses them. Probably some older carved applications use them. I've never seen them on anything fuel injected. If you are using less than the six cylinders with your tool, make sure that you leave all the tubes open. You don't have them any uh, pinched or plugged or anything like that. That's very important. When you turn it on, after it goes through the calibration, there we go. After it goes through the calibration, you'll see all the numbers and there are various units of measure you can cycle through. It does not matter what you pick. You're not setting these motors to any specific number you're just matching the master um i i forget i think my number one is the master i'll have to double check with a flashlight but one of my adjustment screws has a little paint on it anyway whatever your master is all you're doing is making note of that and setting all of your other cylinders to it it makes no difference what your unit of measure is here or what the actual numbers are so nothing to really pay attention to. Now, other cool thing is, unlike other tools that need these restrictors in, and that's because if you just take the raw impulse from the motor, it's too violent, and your gauge is just doing this. You can't get a reading. So the restrictors do exactly what you think they do. They're just a little tiny hole, so the impulse, the pressure going through the tubes is a lot smaller. So you get much smaller movements and you can actually read the gauge. This does everything automatically for you. You don't need any restrictors. It just magically, because it's digital, gives you a readable reading. Bada bing, bada boom. So with the old carb tune, I would have to hang it here on the handlebars or someplace else to keep it in a vertical position. And with the DigiSync, there's no need to do anything like that. This works in absolutely any orientation. 
It is magnetic, however, I'm going to make a suggestion for improvement. Make the magnet a lot stronger. Now, maybe it works better with the two or four cylinder versions because you've got less tube here, less weight, but on a vertical surface, it slowly slides down. Does not hold on a vertical tank here. So what I end up having to do is put it someplace more horizontal and still it likes to move around. It, it's really kind of weak. If you get it on a horizontal surface, perfectly flat, yeah, it snaps into place. I would equate it, I mean, closer to like a mag case for your phone or one of those magnetic carry handles. That's about the strength of it. So it could definitely be stronger. And I would also like some type of hook because sometimes it is convenient just to hang it right here. And that would be really nice. I think what I'll do is uh, use a couple of zip ties, put one in between here, just make it, a, make it a loop tight, and then put another one around to make a little loop so I can have a hanger. Because that's gonna be a lot more convenient for me than having to worry about this slipping off and slamming on the ground or scratching something. So, little uh, suggestion there for the company. Now when you attach your tubes, and again, it's going to look a little different if you've got the two or four cylinder versions, but there's no labels for what's what. They just kind of follow the display. So the upper left-hand corner is the upper left-hand corner, and they follow in sequence like that. The first row here aligns, but then they get spaced out. So uh, the RPM is just based off of the impulses. It's not an accurate tach tachometer reading. It's not electronic. So that's just a general guideline for those that need a very specific RPM for taking your readings and such. All right, let's go fire it up. Um, my number three is my master, so that one right there is what I'll be syncing everything to. Let's see how they look. I don't know how close it's gonna be. I last did it years ago, but I don't think it was too many miles ago. I don't remember exactly when I did it. And it feels okay. I don't have any noticeable vibration, but if it's slightly off, it can definitely affect starting and running and acceleration and fuel economy and all that kind of good stuff, even before you feel it through the bars. All right, so yep, verification. <laughs> I thought it was good and it is good. Nothing to do there, but adjustment, it's exactly the same no matter what tool you're using. Make your adjustment, give it a few revs, let it settle, look at your number, go from there. Bada bing, bada boom. Absolutely love the tool. I mean, it does exactly what it says it's gonna do. Make that magnet stronger, give me a little loop. And man, that thing would just be a solid recommendation without any faults. I do wish I had the four version though, because I'm just never gonna use these and they're kind of in the way. I don't want to clip them off and I, I tried gently pulling it out and I don't think they're on any nipples so I don't think they're removable from here. I'm not going to do anything with them but having it more compact, a little lighter, getting rid of the extra. Buy the one you're going to use is my suggestion. Save the money. Um, I didn't have a choice. They already sent me it before I said hey you know send me the four cylinder if you're going to send anything but if you're going to buy one my point is don't just buy the six because it's not too much more money if you're not gonna use it. It'll be better if you just get the one you want. All right, that's it. See you next time.